to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee. And thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee. And thou shalt return unto the Lord thy God and, obey his, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity, have compassion on thee, and will return and gather thee from all nations, whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out of the uttermost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, from thence will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. Verse number 11, thou shalt, or verse number 8, rather. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord, and do all his commandments which I command thee this day. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thy hand the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of thy land, for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy father, father, fathers. Excuse me. As he rejoiced over thy fathers. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book, the law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all uh, thy soul. <laughs> he said, uh, for this commandment which I command thee this day is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. So he said, he said it's, it's not something that's complicated. It's not hidden from you, neither is it far off not in heaven, that thou shalt say, I wish somebody get to heaven and bring it back to me, that we may hear it and do it. It's not beyond the sea, that thou shalt say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very nigh unto thee, in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. See, I have set before thee this day life good and death and evil. Amen. And down a little bit farther he said, so choose life. Amen. But in verse number 14 it said, but the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou, amen, that thou mayest do it. Amen. So, uh, so when, I, when I'm reading this, uh, reading through the passage, not just taking verse number 14, but taking in the context of what is being said from 1 to verse, actually through that whole chapter, there is one theme that seems to be a central theme of that, of that particular chapter, and that would be returning to blessing. Returning to blessing. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word that's forever settled in heaven. Pray, O God, that as your word is anointed, that same anointing would fall heavy upon us here today, and that you would touch every heart and every life. I pray, God, that you would minister to me and through me as we endeavor to speak the word of God in a way that would be pleasing to you. I pray, O God, a special anointing would fall upon each one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask these things, and I will be careful to give you all praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor to the word of God. Amen. If we read Deuteronomy chapter number 6, amen, and uh, reading through just a couple of passages there, the Bible would tell us that, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, amen, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, Amen. And then he said, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. He said, you're going to put it in the place where you lay down at night. You're going to remember, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. When you get up in the morning, 
first thing that you're going to be rehearsing is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, with all of thy mind, and with all of thy strength. Everything that you do, amen, and every thought that you have is prefaced with the thought, There is one Lord, and he is to be loved with every fiber of my being. Amen. And, uh, and that love, amen, will fulfill itself uh, in, uh, in different things that I say and do within my life. It's the, it is that, uh, so you love me, prove it. Hallelujah. So you love me, prove it. Amen. And, uh, and, and I've got myself in a little bit of a pickle a couple times whenever I've said I love you, babe. To say, well, if you really love me, why don't we go on to Chicago? And uh, you know what? Uh, we've gone to Chicago. <laughs> uh, I like the part where uh, when, when, uh, one time, uh, the one that barks the loudest here, I think, be Brother Crub, and he, and he says, it's that woman you gave me. But I notice that the bark stops quite a bit whenever she comes into the room. There's, a, there's a, something called love that he really does love her. You know what I'm saying. He, he can laugh about it, but, uh, but uh, it's obvious to me that uh, he loves her. And, I, and it's very obvious that she loves him because she put up with him that long. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And, the, and when we look into the scripture, and I, and I picked on them just for a minute, amen, but, uh, but, but uh, when we look into the scripture, he said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God, and thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might, and with all thy strength. Whenever he, whenever he gives that uh, statement, he's saying, I want there to be a proof, amen, that you love me. I don't want you to say it with your mouth, but I want you to do it with your life. I want there to be, amen, living proof that you really do love me. Now, I understand there's a lot of things in the, in the book of Deuteronomy that, that, that uh, you know, there's the part, uh, the first one is that you're not going to have any graven images. And, uh, and I've read the, uh, what do they call it, the redneck version of the Ten Commandments. Amen. And it's hilarious the way that they've got it all. Don't mess with somebody else's wife and don't do this and don't love the things that don't belong to you. It's quite a, quite a list and, and, and it is hilarious. But when you take those Ten Commandments, amen, it's really not about the thou shalt and the thou shalt not. It's about your love relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. How much do I love him? Amen. And I'm going to serve him. And, uh, and so everything that I do, everything that I say, it's consumed in this thing called love. Amen. Now, to take us to a little bit farther down the, down the road of history, by the time you step into the book of Deuteronomy, amen, toward the ending of it, he's winding things down. And, uh, and as he's wrapping it up, he said, God spoke to Moses and he said, when the children of Israel step into their promised land, there are two mountains, and I want there to be a group of leaders on this mountain and a group of leaders on this mountain, and from this mountain there will be a cry of, you're cursed if this happens in your life, if you do that which is wrong, and I'm summing it up in a real quick statement whenever he says, there is a curse that happens whenever you do the wrong, and there is a blessing, amen, whenever you do the right. The blessings outweigh the curses, amen, and, uh, and, 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 it, and though there might be a, a verse or two more, when you consider the blessing of God, it always will, it will turn things around, and God will put a blessing upon us, amen. And uh, when you step into the land, God said, I want the first thing that Israel is to rehearse and understand is that if you go this way, there is a curse. If you go this way, there is a blessing. 
and uh, and you know if uh, if I had a, 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 a uh, uh, driving my car and they said the bridge is out if you go this way and if you go this way it's smooth sailing and and at the end of the day you know you got a hundred dollars extra guess which way I'm gonna go hallelujah I probably wouldn't go the way that the bridge is out just uh, just saying I, I would go the other way it'd be pretty obvious to me that the way that I would want to go is the way that I know that my way is guaranteed. If they said, I can't tell you exactly which bridge is out, that would make it even more scary. And I, if, uh, if I had to go that way, I wouldn't be driving the speed limit. I would go as cautious as I could because I knew that there was a problem on that road. But if I had the choice of which way to go in both roads, led the same direction, amen. I would definitely not take the road that the bridge was out. Definitely not. I understand a, a bridge being out. And when Israel walked across into that land of promise, amen, it was as if God said, I'm going to put people on this side that's going to tell you if you go this way, the bridge is out. And if you go this way, Amen. Everything is going to be blessing. But he also understood the nature of man. He also understood that, amen, in our flesh there's something, <laughs> as man will sometimes do things that are dumb. And, uh, and there are times that we might make a decision that we shouldn't make. And so he said, I'm going to prepare you for what you have to do to get out of the bad decision. And, uh, and, and so he let them know that this is what you have to do to get out of the bad decision. Now, it's not real complicated. Uh, and, and that's what we read whenever he said uh, there in, in, in verse number, uh, verse number uh, uh, 11, he said, it's not hidden from you. It's not something that is so uh, uh, that is so complicated that you're really going to have to try to figure out where it, what the answer is, and it's not a far off. It's not something that's distant, and it's not in the heavens that you got to say, "Boy, I wish there'd be an angel that'd fly down here right now and give me the answer to this because I really need to know the key." Amen. To getting back to the blessing of God, he says it's not. It's not that complicated. As a matter of fact, he said. It's not even on the other side of the ocean where, where you could say, well, if I could get the biggest boat, maybe I could get over there and I could find somebody that could give me the answer from there. No, he said, it's not there, but the word is nigh unto you. It's even in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. He said, it's real simple. If you will return, the blessing is waiting. I, I don't know if we could get it much simpler than that. Uh, you know, kind of, uh, look, if, you, if you're going in the wrong direction, turn around. <laughs> I tell them I'm a dad because they're not here to defend themselves. Uh, whenever my dad was, uh, whenever mom and dad were in North Dakota, uh, they were on a trip somewhere. I can't even remember where they were going, but they were down in South Dakota. And uh, Dad had got off church that night. After he dismissed church, he had they had to make a trip, and, and they were driving. And Mom said, "Do you have it?" And she said, "And he said, yeah, I've got it, no problem." And she looked up and she saw this sign, and the sign uh, said a, a certain city, and the mileage to that city. And she said, "Okay, you've got it." And he said, "Yes." And uh, he said, go back to sleep. I, I'm under control. Everything, I'm wide awake. Everything's doing good. And a couple of hours later, she woke up again and she said, you sure you got it? And he said, yes, I've got it. She said, oh, okay. And she looked up and there was that sign again. They had driven in a circle for two hours. And uh, he had it. Needless to say, Dad stopped driving at that point. 
and mom took the wheel. And we probably got there faster. No. <laughs> you know, there's times whenever we, whenever we think we've got everything in the right path and we're going the right way and everything is just, just perfect. And if we're not careful, we can fall asleep at the wheel. And I'm not talking about naturally. I'm talking about a spiritual. There can be a spiritual sleepiness that gets a hold of us and, and we're doing nothing but going in a great big old circle. Amen. And, 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 and what God wants to do every once in a while within our life is say, hold on just a minute. Get, there's the stop sign. Stop. Look at the signs. See where you're at. And let's change direction. It's not enough just to be driving. You've got to be going somewhere. And, 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 and so he said, this isn't complicated. He said, what I'm telling you is that it's time to return to the yeah. blessing that I want. I, I really think that whenever we read, amen, of, of God's goodness and His grace, he, he really doesn't want to dish out correction. It's harder for me to comprehend now, uh, or then, than what it is now about correction. I remember whenever my dad would correct me as a kid, and he said, this is hurting me more than it's hurting you. And maybe I'm the only one that it, that, that their dad and their mom told them that, but but uh, I mean, I didn't want my dad to suffer. You know, if it's going to hurt you, don't do it to me. You know. But the older I get, the more I understand understood that really the correction that I received did hurt him more than it hurt me, because my seat of my britches warmed up for just a minute, but my dad really didn't want to warm the seat of my britches up. That wasn't what he was saying. I can't wait to get home and just get Ken off into the bedroom and see what I can do about, uh, about making him cry for a minute. No, I really think that what my dad really wanted to do was to, uh, was to take me out fishing or to do something fun with me or to do something that, that would be classified as, as showing a bit more love love to me. But instead, because of because of what I had done, he had to correct it. And really, that's the way it is with God. He's, he is our Heavenly Father, and He doesn't do anything, amen, by accident. He just says, you know, look, I, I really don't want my, my whole intent on being with you today is not so that I can show, show you the, the correction that I can do in your life, but the reason that I want to come into your life anytime is so that I can show you I really want to bless you. I really want to do something great within your life. And uh, isn't it so much, isn't it such an awesome thing whenever whenever you come into the presence of the Lord and uh, you didn't get the spanking and you just got the love? I, I, I mean, there's been times whenever it's, it just feels so good to walk into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Man, isn't that an incredible feeling? You know, to be able to just, to know that, Lord, maybe yesterday I really would, but you forgave me for yesterday, and now today, you know, we have a fresh start. When we started fresh today, you just, before anything else, you just wrapped your arms around me and said, I still love you. And uh, so he said, he said, this thing is really easy. All you've got to do is return back to the blessing. If it, was, if it was something that was complicated, again, God has to rehearse it to a man by the name of Solomon. Solomon prays a prayer of dedication at his temple, and whenever he prays it, he, he began, he under, understanding the, the flesh of man, <laughs> he prays and he said, you know, when your people have done wrong, and, and, and they're in battle, and you're fighting against them, but instead of fighting for them. If they'll turn to you, would you please hear? And if, they're, if, if there's famine in the land because they've disobeyed you, will, if they will turn to you, would you bring and turn the famine back into a place of plenty? And, if, and, and he lists off all of these things. If, if they do things that are wrong, and I think the reason that he prefaced it, 
amen, with all of these things that are wrong is because he knew the sinful nature of man and the flesh that we're made of. And he, and he said, God, I'm going to try to cover every base that I can think of of the mistakes that a man can make because here we are dedicating this temple. And what better way for me to pray to you knowing that you're hearing my prayers at this dedication to say, God, if we ever blow it, would you please forgive us of every sin and would you turn me, turn this thing around? And God responded and his response is not as long as what his prayer was, but is, is just or more powerful than what his prayer is in Second Chronicles chapter number 7 and verse number 12. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up the heaven that there be no rain, if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Mine eye, now mine eyes shall be opened and mine ears uh, attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever. Amen. And so what he speaks, he said, I know there's going to be times whenever, whenever people are going to make uh, a, a wrong decision within their life. But I want mankind to understand if you will return, the blessing is waiting. If you will return, amen, there's always a blessing, amen, that is waiting for you as you begin your return. It's amazing the things that God, amen, does for a man whenever he returns to him. Amen. A man that, uh, that we call a man after God's own heart. Amen. Committed adultery and murder. Amen. Num disobeyed God by numbering Israel. And yet there was something that David learned along the way. If I'll return to God, hallelujah, there's a blessing that's waiting, amen, in my return. Will I ever have to deal with guilt from the things that I've done in my past? Perhaps. But I'm living in the blessing of God because I returned. Hallelujah. How many times have we returned back to God? How many times have we come to God again and said, Lord... Hey man, it's been a while since I since I I've really talked to you the way that I should. Hey man, how many times have we come to him and say, God, you saw what I did today. I'm not the most proud of it. Would you please forgive me? Hey Amen. And what a blessing comes our way. Hallelujah. Whenever we return unto the things that are right. Oh, praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 22. Amen. And verse number 28, amen, gives the command, Remove not the ancient landmark at which thy fathers have set. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's, it's Solomon who had, who had prayed that prayer, amen, sometime uh, before that that makes this statement both in chapter 22 and chapter 23 of Proverbs. Remove not the ancient landmark. Many times whenever we speak of landmarks, amen, we only speak of a landmark as something that is my, my particular property line. Amen. It's what I own. Amen. I, whenever I bought my house uh, back actually a year ago now, I went to the neighbor and I said, I don't feel like having it surveyed. It doesn't matter that much because I know about the boundaries. And uh, can you tell me about where I have to mow and where you mow? That's what I really wanted to know. And the one neighbor said, well, he said, it's my understanding. He said, whenever I asked that question, we didn't have a survey. 
but he said the neighbor told me it was right straight down this line and do you see that little deal uh, uh, right there at the end I said yep he said that's the corner and he said somewhere along this way and so I went to the neighbor behind me and I said look can you tell me and they said well it's my understanding that it goes from here back over to that uh, the neighbor on that side said it goes to that corner right there and uh, and and to the streets but if I measure it it probably goes a little bit farther than that and I said, oh, okay, he said, but uh, if you'll just do that little part right there, he said, we don't worry about it, we're neighbors here. And I said, oh, good, and said, that just makes me happy that somebody isn't worried about it if I didn't mow two inches extra. And, uh, but I learned that the, and, and that's the way that I always think about landmarks, and that's perhaps uh, sometimes in our minds that's what we think about when we think about landmarks. It's a position, it's a, it's a piece of property that I own. It's the it's what my dad gave me or is that as by inheritance. But whenever I looked a little bit closer at landmarks, amen, it can be something a little bit different as well. Uh, back in ancient times, perhaps more than today, uh, things, direction was given by landmarks. If you go down to this particular go about this amount of time or this amount of space, you will see, amen, this particular stone, this particular thing, and at that point, then you're going to have to turn and go this way. I'll never forget the story of, a, of one person that was said that they were given direction, said, go down to this pasture and there'll be two white horses in the, in the pasture. And there wasn't two white horses in the pasture that day. They took him into the barn. That's not a landmark. A landmark is saying go down to a certain deal, and there's and there's a and there's a pillar that's been there for the whole time I've been there, and that's a landmark. And uh, and, and 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 God made specific recommendations: remove not the ancient landmarks. In other words, what He was saying was, is there are some places that help in the returning to the blessing. There are some places along the way that give us the direction that we should go. And he said, don't take those things away. And, and just, just to kind of give you a, a, a for instance, whenever Israel, a man, crossed the Jordan River, they were told, instructed by God to take 12 stones and put them in the midst of the river. They were also instructed to put 12, 12 stones on the other side in the promised land and they said excuse me when your family or your sons and daughters ask you in years to come what do these stones mean amen they said you take them back here and you remind them these stones are the way that God brought us through that that Jordan River the river was flood stage and this is a landmark to remind me of the things that God has done in my past as a matter of fact, the, the landmarks actually started in Egypt, amen, because he said, you go at Passover time and you take a lamb and once a year you remind yourself by eating that lamb, and you, you slay the lamb and, and, you, and you cook it and you eat that lamb as a reminder, amen, of what God did for you by bringing you out of Egypt. It's there as a landmark. It's something that is distinct. It's something that you are to do. And the, the, the Hebrew people today that are trying to stay with the, the traditional ways, when it comes time for Passover, they're still buying a lamb and they're still having it perhaps slaughtered and then they will, and then they will do the cooking of that lamb and they will eat the Passover and they will talk about what, what the scripture says in Deuteronomy, or in the book of Exodus rather, concerning that lamb. Amen. It's, it, it is their tradition. It's something that they do year after year. Why? Because it's a part of a landmark. It's something that they don't ever, God didn't ever want them to forget. And, uh, and when they forgot that, that's whenever they started running into problems. And uh, but it was a 
it was something that was a landmark to them. And God said, don't remove the ancient landmarks. Another example of, those, of, of a landmark in, in Old Testament times would have been Elijah sitting, uh, standing on top of the Mount, uh, Mount Carmel, and he said the altar was broken down. Evidently, somewhere along the line, somebody had an altar that was built to God, and, and, uh, and someone had let that altar disintegrate, either disintegrate or they had broken it down. Perhaps my feeling is is that is that man had had taken it down, had removed it, and it was not there. And before before Elijah would start bringing it, before he would call and ask God to send the fire, he would say, "It's time to rebuild a landmark. I'm going to build this altar so that so that the fire can fall." There can be no fire until the landmark is built. It's that place. And so Proverbs says, amen, and, and whenever he's saying, remove not the ancient landmarks, what he's actually speaking about is going back to the book of Second Chronicles where he said, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, if they will do that, amen, what he, he's saying there is some landmarks that God has promised us and if we will keep these landmarks within our lives amen your father set this down and you've got to maintain those landmarks you can't let them go they're the way that people will know amen where the blessings are if they don't have the blessing if they don't know how to get to the blessing Amen. It's going to take them a struggle. It's going to take them a fight. But as long as they can, as long as they may never have gone this way, amen, before, but they can, by the landmarks, know that this is the way that I should go. And, and, and if, I, if I can get this, somehow there is a returning to blessing. God and I and, and I uh, and, and I'm gonna, I, I'll, I'll I'll give us just a, just uh, just a little bit of a Bible study just for a quick minute, and uh, and then I'm gonna and then I'm gonna take it to the area that I feel like God would have us to go. The first thing, the first landmark that I see that God would that God would consider to be important is deliverance. Amen. From Israel being delivered out of the land of Egypt. It's leaving the things that hold us captive behind. Number two, amen, the next landmark that we have within our life is direction. It's following the leading of God wherever He goes. It's following God wherever He goes, knowing that everything will work out for the good if I stay in this path. It's not saying that every day is going to have blessing attached to it so that I'm going to get a million here and five million here and I'm going to win the lottery over here. But it's that, it's that knowing that the end of this path, that whenever I finish the path, I'm going to stand back and look over my life and I'm going to say, was I ever blessed or what by walking? He's going to take me down paths. Maybe he may take me through a trial. Maybe he may take me through something that I would look at it and say, now why in the world? But he has a purpose for whatever he takes me through. He doesn't ever take us to and leave us. He will always take us through whatever trial or whatever test that we may face. We'll get through it. And when we stand on the other side, we'll look back and say, what a blessing it was to follow. It's a landmark within our life. It's a landmark in our life, amen, the third landmark that there is, that we have is a, is a landmark called revelation. Moses stood at the top of, of the mount, and uh, the, Israel had just failed God for the umpteenth time and they, had, uh, and they had built an altar, 
amen, or they had built a golden calf and they had worshipped at that golden calf. And now Moses is pleading for mercy for the children of Israel. When he finishes with his pleading for mercy, he finishes off with the, que with the requ request, show me thy glory. And when, and when, he, when he began his plea, if you say that you're going to forgive, if you say that everything is going to be right, then God, I'm asking you one more time, show me your glory. And from that point, amen, through the rest of his life and through the rest of, uh, through the rest of life as we know it, there will always be a moment in, in a landmark where each one of us can go back to that moment when Moses saw the glory of God, amen, in a way like he had never seen it. And there has been a desire, amen, within, within our hearts and our lives that said, if Moses could see the glory of God in that, in that way, amen, if I'll stay on this path, hallelujah, there is a place in the landmarks where I'll be able to see the glory of God in a way like uh, Moses did, if not even greater. Amen. Hallelujah. I want us to know that we can behold His glory. It's a landmark that God wants us to have. Amen. Let's worship the Lord in this place today. I love you, Jesus. I praise you, O oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. The fourth thing that I that I would like, the fourth landmark that I would like to talk about is the landmark of trust. Amen. It's the it is that it's that landmark of depending upon God to supply your needs and not depending upon what I can do, amen, to supply my own needs. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Amen. There's something powerful about being able to say, there's a landmark that God will take me to. It's a, it's a landmark of trust. I haven't been able to do it. My, I've never been able to do it myself, and it'd be totally successful. But if I will trust in the Lord, Hallelujah. If I will trust in Him, amen, it's a landmark that is held sure and it always will hold sure. God will take care. Hallelujah. Amen. And the fifth one that I would speak on just for just briefly is the, is the landmark of victory. The landmark of victory. We were in the car just the other day, and, and as we were as, as we were driving, the Lord, uh, we were discussing. My wife and I were discussing some things, and, and I said, you know what, the Lord just impressed me. It was something that I thought I don't I know it's not uh, perhaps mine only, but uh, but it seems to me this is what the Lord spoke that the most memorable victories are preceded by the greatest struggles. The most memorable victories are preceded by your greatest struggles. Your greatest victory, amen, before you had your greatest victory, you had your greatest battle. Before your greatest healing, you had your greatest sickness. Before your greatest miracle, you had to have your greatest need. And God has a way of taking us into a place that seems to be insurmountable so that he can show you how powerful that he is within your life oh hallelujah amen I, I, and, and, and I, I just if somehow we can always comprehend amen and it's it's hard for our human minds to fathom this but sometimes God takes us into places where we're saying why whenever God's saying you haven't got to the end of the battle yet Amen. When you get through this battle, amen, you're going to have the victory sign over you and you're going to say, I won. Hallelujah. God helped me through this. Amen. 
when you're facing, amen, the insurmountable odds and everything seems to be against you, it may not seem like it's working out. Amen. It's but a landmark understand. place in God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the battle that uh, uh, that we fight and, and that we're keeping on pressing on until finally, amen, that day breaks and God gives us the victory. Amen. It's Jacob that stands, amen, looking an angel face to face and saying, I won't let you go unless you bless me. This is the toughest time I've ever had in my life, but I'll never forget this. And, and, and for generations to come, how many individuals have found themselves, amen, in a battle of the spiritual kind where they understood Hey Amen. I've got to travail. I've got to press on. There's something that God wants to give me. Hey Amen. And it's a landmark. Hey Amen. That was that was placed. Hey Amen. Back in ancient times. And I'm not going to remove that landmark. But it's the way that I'll get to the blessing that God has. Oh, hallelujah. Hey Amen. I can't get to the blessing any other way. I've got to go the same way that others have trod. And I'm going to keep that landmark. Amen. Where it needs to be. Hallelujah. The question within my own mind, and 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 and, 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 and uh, excuse the 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 questions. I just shut things down just for a few minutes. I thought, God, there's there's been revivals that have happened and swept the country in other days and other times. Somehow, whenever I speak of revival, I, I, I really believe it's a blessing thing. I believe that it's a blessing thing. And, uh, and I read this scripture in, in, in Deuteronomy, and it said, and it's not hidden from you. It's not a far off. It's not in the heavens and the angels got to come and show you something great. It's not across the ocean. So that you got to go try to find it there. But it's within you. It's within your mouth. It's something that's down deep in your heart. What is that something that I can that I can tap into the place where revival Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord with all thine heart. With all thy heart. Amen. God, I need an answer today. Where can I find it? It's, it's real simple. I'm, not, I'm going to tell you that it's, it's not in the heavens. But if you'll love the Lord with every fiber of your being, Amen. Suddenly, amen, that thing that seems seems to be so distant becomes tangible. And we step into a place of returning back to the blessing again. We step into that place where blessing begins to be poured out upon. Grew up in, in the home of the parents that, that felt the call of God to go and start two churches. We didn't have a lot of money. We saw a lot of miracles. Uh, we didn't have it easy. We saw a lot of victories. And, uh, and over the years, amen, there's something within me that says, God, it's still just as obvious as it always has been, if I return, let's not try to chase off somewhere in the distance, but let's get something that's, that's close to us. I want to love you with all a love that, that goes into a place of, of the call of God. And I, and, and I just... It's just us it's just here for a moment, but, but if, if we can grab a hold of this, it's something so simple. What would, what, 
what caused my grandfather to load up a, a wagon on the back of his truck or tra uh, on the back of his car, put the kids in and put everything that he owned in that wagon, come to a city where he didn't have a job, had no job promised to him, and he just left to come to a city. There was no church here. Yet there was a call that God had made. Tell you what it was. It was something real simple. I love God with all my heart. And if that's what it takes, I'm going to do it. And I don't know all of the sacrifices that He made. I know some of them. But the only thing that I really know about my grandfather more than anything else is it's real basic and real simple. It's not across the ocean, it's not up in the heavens, but it's something real basic. From the time, the, the only thing that I really remember about him, he loved God's word and he loved God with everything. And that was the thing that kept him into the place where he needed to be. And, I, and, and, and then when I, we shut it down, amen, with that thought. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to love God with everything. I've taught, I've taught several Bible studies and, and, and they say, how can you keep on living for God the way that you do it? A bunch of times they'll say, I don't see how you can do it. And I say, well, I learned the key along the way. It's easy to serve God hard. It's, hurt, it's hard to serve God easy. If you want to get by with murder, you ain't going to serve God. But if you do everything that you can to serve God, it will always be easier the more hard, the, the harder that you Really, that's the key. Hallelujah. Let's love the Lord together tonight. I love you, Savior. I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. I pray, oh God, that as we are as we are closing out this service, that there would be an answer. Hallelujah. That each one of us would come to that conclusion of. I'm going to serve you with everything that I have. I'm returning back to the blessing. I'm going back to the old paths. I'm going to stand in a way that really I need to be standing in all the time. I'm going to love this truth. I'm going to love the things of righteousness. God, I'm going to go back to landmarks of, of ancient men. I'm going to say, oh, that's the way that I should go and I'll follow their paths learn hallelujah, the direction that I have. I'm going to hang on to the landmarks. I'm not going to remove them, but I'm going to I'm going to follow them as they lead me to the final destination to the place of eternal blessing. Lord Jesus, I love you too. Help me, oh God, that I will Help me, oh God. I would always love this truth. And I would return to the blessing. a burden in my heart. Lord, take me back to the old land Oh Lord, take me back to the old land There I'll make a new
place of birth.